So we're, we're going to have um, a different kind of talk, a very data-driven talk today. Um, we'll, we'll introduce, yeah. So my name's Diane Mueller, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm the Director of Community Development for OpenShift, um, and, the, uh, and I work in the cloud platform BU of Red Hat. And I've had the wonderful pleasure of um, working over the past three years, yeah, three, three four years, years yeah. like Paris OpenStack yeah. Summit, I think hmm. I met Daniel. Is Creertel? Yeah. Okay, there you go, from Bitergia. Um, and Bitergia has been um, the tool of my, my choice to use to do data mining on um, the OpenShift community. And over the past couple of um, months, PDF. I don't know what's going on with our slides, but why don't you throw up the... No uh, worries, it's the PDF I was trying to say. Okay, before. so go to the next slide if you don't mind. So we're going to talk today about um, this theory I have, or, um, and I didn't try and use the data to prove my theory. I've been playing in this data mine of um, GitHub contributors to the OpenShift project for the past three years. And the past, I'd say, three months, um, Daniel and I have been um, luckily working together on a new data set, which includes um, K Kubernetes, a number of the CNCF projects, and um, OpenStack. So my data set just expanded, and my mind was blown. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, why, why I'm looking at all these different d disparate data sets um, and do a bit of a reality check on the OpenShift project itself, talk about um, what I call uh, dynamic community personas. So I. Um, I'm addressing the different types of people that are in um, the communities that we're working on. And then we're going to talk about how um, we're changing the model for community management or community development, as I like to call it, and some of the tools that we're using to do that. So first, let's talk about how um, the projects. There are so many projects at Red Hat. If you work at, how many of you work, work at Red Hat? OK, so I know the Red Hatters. Know. Everybody at Red Hat has seen this this diagram, anyone who's ever gone to any conferences. There are millions of projects in GitHub. And our little project sits in the middle here um, somewhere, um, OpenShift Origin, and it's been around for about five years. If you go to the next slide. Um, and we talk at Red Hat a lot about um, open source and open communities. And the whole day today, I've been sitting in the back of the room, and it's been a, a huge pleasure for me to do that because I don't usually get to sit in a conference room and not have to give or organize a conference. So it's been wonderful. And we're talking about open organizations, um, communi community models, all kinds of collaboration. And really, when we talk about this, these are the things um, at Red Hat and in other open source projects that I'm involved in that we're talking about. Um, that really drive innovation into the project. I hope you hit it again. But I wanted to step back a second and talk a little bit about um, OpenShift itself as an open source project to set the stage a little bit for why this data is so interesting and the sort of network analysis that we got to do with this data set. Um, I have a new formula. Uh, about five years ago when I joined Red Hat, OpenShift was OpenShift Origin. You may remember the Panda was our, our logo back then. And it was a Ruby on Rails project built um, on a MongoDB. It was a PaaS or PaaS, depending on where you're from, a platform as a service. And it was a standalone, very independent project. And about three, almost three years ago now, we pivoted and shifted the whole project to be basically a Kubernetes distribution. And last August, we finally up and renamed the project from Origin to OKD, which um, I jokingly refer to as OK Diane because we couldn't make up any other name. We couldn't use Kubernetes in the naming of it or call it a distribution. And for legal reasons, we had to change the name. But it really um, became a Kubernetes distribution with a whole lot of value add on top of it and lots of upstream projects being merged into it and lots of um, tangential projects that touch upon it as well. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. So OKD, just to continue that thread, is out there at okd.io. You can still download it. Um, if you hit the next one, yep. I'm trying to race through this little bit background. It's still 
that we didn't change the name of the repo at all. It's still origin, OpenShift origin, just for naming when we refer to it. We now refer to it as OKD, and we brought um, the Panda back in a big way on the site. <coughs> Go ahead. So when we did that shift from being um, an in a standalone project um, that was a platform as a service and over to shifting over to Kubernetes, what happened to us, or as a community manager it happened to me, was that my world um, exploded again. So what we really saw was um, more and more of the engineers that were working directly on OpenShift were shifting where they were doing their work into Kubernetes. And this slide is probably out of date, a couple of months or a couple of cycles, but a lot of the Red Hat engineers ended up working in Kubernetes in the different SIGs, and I think there's even more SIGs now. I, there's no way you could put all the SIGs on there. But really what happened was it was a shift from trying to get people to contribute to our project, to OpenShift, Origin, and put code there, into collaborating with a much bigger user base. So, and that, that user base just kept growing because not only was it Kubernetes, but it was all of these side projects and initiatives that are coming under the CNCF, as well as a number of other ones, the OCI work and the different things that CoreOS brought to the table as well. So there was a lot more moving parts to community management and community development, a lot more of relationships that we had to start taking account of and tracking. So um, the reality check is, and I just want to keep this all above board, is that um, OpenShift as a project has always been a heavily Red Hat driven project. When I came on board about five years ago, it was very Red Hat, um, and that circle is its not out of date. That's like the past five years of contributions to the project. Almost 98% of the work that is code in OpenShift origin has been done by uh, a Red Hat engineer, someone paid by Red Hat at some point in time in their career. Um, when I first came on board, there were really only five other companies that were contributing directly to um, to OpenShift Origin. Over the past two, to th two years and three years, we've seen the, the rise of OpenShift and the popularity of Kubernetes. And we've also seen a huge rise, once we take those open Red Hatters out, of the number of contributing um, folks in the project. But it's still not great. So I'm not going to say we're doing rah-rah, we're wonderful, we have you know huge contribution. Because what we're going to try and show you today is um, where the contributions are going and why we want them to go elsewhere. So sort of the network effect and how all of these communities are starting to converge on each other. So I'm going to just pause it. The other thing that happened over this past, past two years is we started up a new community model called OpenShift Commons, which is bringing in users, contributors, upstream project leads into a peer-to-peer -peer network. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and why that's helping us grow to from five to 70. But first, a word from our toolmaker. Yeah. A bit more of background here. So um, it happens that Diane has all of the knowledge about the community. I have uh, kind of a small amount of knowledge about the community and any other community we are analyzing. Mm -hmm. So then we have two things here. We have skills from the community and the knowledge from the community, domain context, let's say. Then we have more technical skills, let's say, in terms of uh, producing data and analyzing things. So the first time we started to discuss about this, Diane said, I want everything. And I said, well, let's start small. So we produce some value, right? And then we say, what do we have here? So the first analysis we started to do, to do, to do was the OpenShift Kubernetes thing. And the question here was mostly related to, hey, we have OpenShift developers, we have uh, Kubernetes developers. Do we have people working in both projects? Yes, there are you know probably all of these, but then how many of them are coming from Red Hat? How many of them are out of Red Hat? What other companies are working in this way, right? Then we can extend this analysis to other projects. So we can have more CNCF uh, related projects, those incubating uh, as these three. Um, these projects are being selected basically because those were... Those are the ones I had the most domain knowledge in. Yeah, exactly. So Jaeger and Open Tracing, I helped shepherd them through some of the work that they did on to get into <laughs> the CNCF. So I knew all the players there. So it made cleaning up the data set easy. 
Yeah. And then it happened that we had the whole OpenStack foundation analyzed. So we said, uh, we can put everything together and say what's, and check what's going on, right? Um, so the analysis for today is only focused on Git repositories. Um, so for OpenStack, we have something like 1 million commits, 600,000 if we ignore the merge and so on. Um, Kubernetes is uh, the second one, the, the biggest, then OpenSea from the other three in terms of uh, well, the size of, of the yeah. and activities. I, and I think hmm. the, the most important thing that I would point out about the data set too is the biggest lie about machine learning and AI in my book is about data cleansing. And um, the most work that went into this project was cleaning up the data set. And nobody yeah. ever talks about that when you're da doing data analytics, but cleaning up the data set. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, I had been playing in OpenStack community mm -hmm. from, I don't know, early days in Boston. Um, I knew OpenShift and I knew Jaeger. And I know a lot of the people in the Kubernetes world, Containerd, not so much. But um, it really helps if you know, if you have some domain knowledge. Going in cold would be difficult, I would say. Mm. Yeah, um, and this is this is the tooling we are using. It's Grimoire Lab, which is a Linux Foundation project. In this case, it's part of the Chaos community. Um, it works like well, you have the data sources, then you have some extraction part, you do some process, and then you go to the browser, which is the final dashboard that we have. The magic about identities is right here, and this is where most of the work is being done in terms of affiliations. We have to well, you have to spend hours and hours. A lot of time. Yeah, and we have spent hours and hours doing that and cleaning the data and so on. So I would say from a data perspective, probably 90% of the work is cleaning data, curating the data, and then preparing the data for visualization, thinking about what you want to visualize, let's say, right? And then the, the, the other 10% is basically the results you have on the table and how to explain this. So, so you need some storyline, right? Um, just a bit of uh, introduction about the charts we are going to see uh, in the presentation. So this is a social network chart. Think of the dots. The pink dots are developers. If the dots uh, have a different color, perhaps it's because they are because they, they, that developer is coming from a certain company. So Red Hat will have a color. Google will have another color, etc. And the size basically is the size of the contributions of that developer to a specific repository or project. So the blue squares are basically repositories or projects, right? So, and we have a connection between a repository and a developer if they have committed something in a certain period of time. That's all. Okay. Questions? No? Okay. So let's, let's blow through. Yep. So the way that we're going to approach looking at this data, I, th I, I thought, would be to do it based on personas. <laughs> because there are a lot of people out there and a lot of different roles in the community. So the first one is a persona that most of you will recognize right off the bat. And this is where I was joking with Dan, who's in here, um, that I should have used him since I knew he's, he's in here and he's been had his fingers in lots of pies. But Clayton is a really, he's a project lead persona. He's someone who's really driving the OpenShift projects from the early days. And um, he works on, surprisingly, a, a lot of things for the amount of time that he gets to do. But, how he shows up in the data sets is um, contributing to Kubernetes, of course, to OKD. Um, he has one contribute to Prometheus. He's been playing in K-Native. He's obviously done some stuff in um, Project Atomic. And um, if we go way back, and we'll show you in the dashboard now so we give a little bit of an illustration, he also shows up in um, Solemn, um, which is a a project, I think now dead, but maybe not quite yet dead. Um, I saw there was still some people contributing to it, so somebody out there is still using it. Hmm. So why don't you show them what yeah. it looks like in um, here, and, we're, so and everybody stay off the Wi-Fi right now. Um, <laughs> so I have to say, if someone calls me, then the we're connection screwed. will drop. We're, anyway. we're hooped. If, yeah. <laughs> I'm using the 4G connection. So this is the first time uh, Diane said, oh, what, what if we analyze Clayton Coleman? I said, that's all right. I don't know him. So let's look for him and his activity, right? Uh, so uh, this is the last five, uh, eight years of activity of Clayton. You can see on the top right the time picker, which is around here, last eight years, right? Uh, then pretty similar to the previous chart is we have the developer, we have all of the repositories around. So if we dig down here, we can go for, well, Kubernetes metrics or um, some Kubernetes thing. But if you go to some other areas, you will see some OpenSIF, Docker stuff, background, blah, 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 right? So there is a bunch of uh, different pieces of information that you can see around for this developer. Then we said, what if we analyze the very beginning of uh, 
play them, When he right? started working in, at, on this, these projects. Hmm. So go back in time a little bit. Yeah. So this is Clayton in 2011. He didn't exist. <laughs> that was all. Right, so let's go a year after. Now it's running. Okay, so what we have is that Clayton started in uh, working in Origin Server, Django Examples, WordPress, and OpenShift Air RHC, and mainly in these two projects, which are, um, in this case, Origin Server. This is the number of commits, right? And this is the project. In this case, it's OpenShift. And then this is a split by uh, the repositories they've been working at. So we have Origin Server, and the other one here, RHC. Well, let's advance time a little bit. Yep. Because we have a lot of data to go through. This is 2012. So, and here is, here is the OpenStack contribution. This is Solum. <laughs> and um, I'm not quite sure exactly what he was contributing there, but I, could, I had to go back in my memory, because I remembered Solum and Adrian Otto had started that project up, and it was something hmm. sort of like uh, a, a platform as a service, OpenStack's answer to platform as a service. If anyone doesn't remember that, that's OK. It's a good <laughs> thing. So let's step forward in time, and you'll just see how he develops. So basically, this is 2013, he keeps working, 2014, he keeps growing in contributions, mainly in this case, uh, OpenShift Origin and Kubernetes. Then um, 2015, more and more repositories around, mainly again Origin and Kubernetes, but then there are some others as the API or Federation. So, yeah. so, so he's a busy boy, as we can see. Let's pop into the next persona. Yep. There. Um, because um, we all know that Red Hat's doing a lot of contribution, but I wanted to um, show um, how we teased out a, um, one, and someone else, I think you mentioned CERN. CERN does a lot of um, open source work. They use a, lo a little bit of OpenShift in-house in there, and they use a lot of Kubernetes, OpenStack, a lot of other Red Hat stuff, and a lot of it. So um, they show up in OKD in our data set, Kubernetes, OpenStack, and I should say more contributions, all obviously. And I love this picture because it almost, the, it's almost the same diagram, but it's their next upcoming collider um, as, as all the intersections of things going. Mm -hmm. But if you drill down on, on the CERN stuff, what's interesting about this view here um, is what we did, we start, you start to see the interrelatedness of all these projects. Yeah. So these are developers who are working in both projects, and we can watch over time um, how they're yeah. contributing to OpenShift, what they're putting into it. And if you zoom back out a little bit, you can see when some developers are working on both projects. Mm -hmm. And this is when we start to talk about the concept of convergence of communities. So when I have, if I just focused on here, on this little bit, um, as a community manager, I'd miss out on what parts were important in Kubernetes to CERN. So having these tools really is very helpful for me as a community manager to see um, where the puck is going. I'm Canadian, so where we're playing hockey, where the puck is going, what's important to the organizations that are working on my project. Because my project no longer really is a standalone project. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of the work that they did was probably really early on. So yeah. if you, can you take off the CERN <coughs> filter on this and show all of the, do you have one shot? I think the next one, you had the one that was Oh, yeah, jelly. the big one. Not, not here in the laptop because it's really heavy. Okay. <laughs> so just, just to let you know, so this is OpenShift, this is Kubernetes, that's OpenStack. Okay. So, um, so we're going to talk a little bit too about, um, because we, uh, one, the other persona that we look at a lot, or I look at a lot, um, is some of the individuals that pop out in the big jellyfish. We should show the jellyfish yeah. thing too. Maybe jellyfish. Jellyfish here. Jellyfish. Um, when, so you know what I'm talking about. So this, doesn't <laughs> this look a little bit like a jellyfish here? There, the amorphous fun. thing. You start to see all of the people that are involved in um, multiple projects. And then there's a few floaters up at the top are the connectors who are between different projects. Um, and I picked Jaeger because I knew the people there and I, I figured I would recognize some of their names. Hmm. Um, and what we're trying to do is work through all of the GitHub um, data for all of the different um, projects that are under the CNCF umbrella. 
um, but we haven't gotten quite there. But if you go back to the picture of Greg, let me explain why this, this one's important. Because, um, not because I'm wearing my silly grin on my face, but um, because he shows up as a contributor. He only has one or two contributions to these, all of these projects, but he shows up as um, what I call a connector person. And, a, and as if you've read any of Malcolm Gladwell's books around the tipping point um, and that, he is what I would call a maven. He is always on our Slack channel. He's um, done a number of uh, commons briefings. He's very social. He's one of those guys that likes to answer questions and stuff. So for, for me, he's a standout. And you can see that by his connectedness in the community. Um, and we gave him an award for that. But he's, I didn't even know until I started looking at this that he was even looking at Jaeger. Right? So these are the kinds of things with this, these tools that start to pop out in the diagrams as you see the people who are your mavens and the people who, and they tend to be yeah. people, usually they're people you know. And, and the point here was that Jan asked me, so what is Greg? And I said, I don't know. So this is all Kubernetes, OpenShift. These are people working in these two projects, right? And these are people working in the three projects. Those are people working in these two projects. So we realized that Greg is there. So he was here, so he's here. Right? So th these are the three developers that we have that were working in Jagger and OpenShift. Yeah. So he's there. We found yeah. Greg. And, 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 we, and from a community development point of view, there's other um, views we can see. If you go to the next slide, the next yeah. persona, um, we start to see other things pop out in these in these network diagrams. And the reason, and one one of them is Yuri Shurko, who is with Uber, who is the guy um, who is the lead on the Jaeger project. Did a lot of work with Zipkin and um, Open Tracing, um, and he shows up um, with the um, Open Tracing and that he doesn't show up as contributing to OpenShift in any way, but Jaeger is a project that is very near and dear to the hearts of every OpenShift deployment, um, and open tracing is something that's really we need. So it's, it's very important to us. So from a community manager point of view, um, I need to be, keep being aware of these things and watching where the puck, as I keep saying, puck is going. Hmm. Um, the, the other thing about that picture, first before you go, go oh, away from yep. it, um, is how many of you were at KubeCon? A couple of you were at KubeCon. If anyone saw the keynote that um, the two folks from Uber did, they are um, also working on something, um, an operator for their M3DB, their open source distributed database, um, using the operator framework, which is a project that got brought into um, OpenShift with the acquisition of CoreOS. So there's all of this interconnectedness and all of the operators will hopefully all run nicely with OpenShift um, 4.0. So you start to see with these, these data diagrams things that um, you wouldn't normally think of as community manager domain things, where I, I, uh, historically a community manager would just focus on getting people to contribute to, to OKD. I don't care so much anymore, as OKD is really a distribution. Yeah. Um. We discovered part of this because we were following, we, we kept working on this. So this is in this case uh, OpenShift here on the top. And then we have Kubernetes here, right? And then it happens that uh, we are filtering by Uber, Rackspace, or Red Hat. So the Uber folks are around here with the green thing. Red Hat is this uh, light blue stuff. And then the purple are the Rackspace developers. So we said, what if? We only focused on Uber, so then we can do things like this. Let me remove these two people here. And then we save. So then this is Uber. And then we have here our friend Yuri. Yuri. Yeah. And then we see how he's been quite important because the size is basically telling us hey, I've committed a lot of things. And in this case, to open tracing, um, Jagger was the other project, right? If you go back to the slides again, go back to the jellyfish because um, mm -hmm. this, I'm going to keep referring to that as the jellyfish diagram. Mm -hmm. um, this one. one. One of the reasons this is really important too is, and the next one of the next phases of research that I'm going to be doing is pulling in the data on all the other, and there are lots of them, Kubernetes things that call themselves Kubernetes distributions, because really, what is would be interesting for me and from a CNCF 
probably point of view too, is to see where those other Kubernetes distributions are giving back to Kubernetes, um, you know, and what, where that fits into this, this model here too as well. Mm. So if we keep going, sure. jury. Uh, um, well. So um, I'm just watching. Yeah, we have time. something like five minutes. We might minutes, go a little over because I got too much data. I talk too much. Um, Amadeus, um, if you know um, OpenShift and you've gone to any OpenShift thing or read anything or Google OpenShift, Amadeus has been a huge contributor. They've done talks for us about Kafka um, at one of the gatherings. They do lots of um, security practices. They've been really active in doing that. But in doing this um, analysis, we started to see an another interesting phenomenon too is that um, their contributions to OpenStack were into RDO because they're a commercial offering. Um, and there, some of their open, open shift um, uh, OCP contributions were actually to the templates in Azure. So they showed up in Microsoft's Azure's data, um, data sets um, for building the OCP templates for running on there. So they, they show up in different places, but if, and you know, as a, some of these, we're using these examples because I know they're, they're true. But now I can tease this out about other companies that are working um, and contributing. So that list of 70 people who are contributing to OpenShift at the beginning becomes really important um, and an interesting phenomenon that happens. Can we go to the next persona? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, this is the same example with having uh, Amadeus data. So we have Red Hat in pink and Amadeus in green. So they have certain uh, collaborations around and the next one. Um, and then I was going to tell a real quick story about a problem um, child um, that I found. When I w we were going through the data, I talked about data cleansing and data cleanup. Um, this gentleman, um, it, to first, his, his GitHub was YUE9944822. I didn't know who it was. He showed up. And one of the things about this data set that's really cool um, is that it's the log files from GitHub. It's not just the GitHub name and contribution. It goes really deep. So I can go right, drill right down from that graph into someone's actual pull request or commit and get a link back to you and actually see it. And so when this first popped up, um, this gentleman was um, listed as Tencent. And I had this moment of like, oh, cool. Is Tencent using OpenShift? Is they, are they okay? under the hood somewhere, this big Chinese conglomerate? Yeah. And I'm like cleaning, cleansing, going through the, the data logs and going. And it turned out, well, um, one of the Kubernetes leagues, uh, David Eads, knew him from, uh, oh no, it was um, Stefan Shabansky, who uh, knew, knew this person, introduced me to him, and I got to have this conversation on Slack with this person who's in, um, I think he's in uh, mainland China. Yeah. And he, his contribution actually turned out to be, he's not at Tencent, it was a mistagged um, data person. He's at Alipay. And he didn't actually make a direct contribution into OpenShift or OKD. It was an upstream one that was mislabeled. So, but the interesting thing for me is, and you know, so that's data cleansing, but that whole conversation that I got to have with this guy because of these tools, because I can now see someone was making a contribution from an outlier, it popped it up so that I could then have an interaction. And out of that conversation, he said, oh yeah, and we were thinking about using Origin, we just haven't had the time to use it yet. And because I got to have that interaction with him, hopefully that'll spur him on to using some somewhere inside of Alipay, which is even bigger than um, Tencent. So that was really cool. But he shows up <laughs> as well in, um, he does work in SaltStack and Spinnaker and a bunch of other things too. So, so it was not a bug, but a feature. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah, a bug, it was a feature. Yeah. It was part of doing this. <laughs> so I talked a little bit, and yeah. I'll be really quick about and I'll, I can talk at length about what OpenShift Commons is. If you're coming to London next week, Dan and myself and a bunch of other people are hosting um, a peer-to-peer, face-to-face um, -face conference. Um, we do a bunch of them periodically, the day before KubeCons, the day before Red Hat Summit, and a bunch of regional ones. We're going to do one in Milan, so if you want to go to Milan, let me know. Um, and we'll make you talk. But we really what we've had to do in order to expand our connectivity to these folks is change our model of how we connect with people. So we do a ton of face-to-face -face events. Think of gatherings as bigger than meetups all day long with everyone in one room 
meeting and talking to each other to get that face time. We do OpenShift Commons briefings, so we give away the podium all the time to people to talk. And I'd love to have you talk about stuff. We are really active on, on Slack. We have our own form of SIGs, which are more about best practices and lessons learned as opposed to um, the Kubernetes technical SIGs. So we get a lot of talking going on there. So we're really trying to change the model to adapt to this ever-expanding group of people that are part of the network. Um, so there's a couple of things that we were going to, because we're really at the end of our time yeah. here. Yeah. Um, the one thing, the takeaways really are that for us was that no company is working on just one thing. I really can't find anybody who doesn't have their finger in multiple pies and working on different things. Um, coordination with the upstream projects is essential as anyone who's working in the Kubernetes world every release, every three, um, three months, plus all these ancillary tangential projects has become a phenomenally difficult and a multi-person task. Um, the relationships matter. That's why these peer-to-peer -peer events and Slack channels and finding, giving away the podium to other people to speak. In working on this project, it became very clear that domain knowledge is essential, like to understand um, how, which, which of these projects were um, integral to OpenShift and which ones weren't. We're going to keep adding more on that, but it was very helpful. Um, we're going from an era of what, um, what I call community management to community development. So what we're trying to do is continue to build these relationships with people um, and and continue to extend the network of our relationships with, from a Red Hat perspective, from an open source um, leadership perspective, with all of these other projects. And it's not a one person job anymore. There's many, many people in it. Um, inclusivity over exclusivity, um, that, that was sort of my mantra around um, when we had initially had the project, it was mostly Red Hat um, driven. And what we're trying now to do is extend it and embrace everybody else who's in all these other communities, including the OpenStack and the other ancillary communities as well. Um, data, I think I can't say this enough, that the data matters. Um, cleaning up, if you do it as an ongoing job, which I kind of like once a month, I go through all the outliers and figure out where it is. And um, my one thing that everyone probably would is scared about is this last statement, is that anonym anonymity is dead. If you think you're anonymous on GitHub, forget about it. Um, everybody is identifiable. Every one of you has a mobile phone. We can find you somewhere. Um, you're on LinkedIn. There's something about the project you're working on that identifies you as which organization you're with. That said, um, if we went all the way back to the dashboard, there's still a tremendous number of people who are unknown or um, rank themselves as independent. Um, that are working on OpenShift and Kubernetes as well. So that's, I think, a healthy balance S needs to be maintained between people who are being paid in their day jobs to work on these projects and people who are independent. Though I think uh, as we identify more of them um, using the sorting hat and, and brute force, um, a lot of them are coming from places like this, educational facilities. People are doing work and uh, research projects. And so, um, what I would say is, what's next? And, um, I, and I'm not joking about this, is predictive analysis. Because what this one um, effort doing these things really showed me was, um, if we start looking at these network analyses, one, it gives us competitive insight into what are the other Kubernetes distributions are doing. But it also shows us where the puck is going. If we start looking at these data sets as, so these are our core mavens. These are our leads. These are our customers. What other projects are they looking at? So as we get all of GitHub in there, um, this becomes really amazing work. I mean, to, to, I, I, can't, I hope I'm expressing how excited I am about being able to have these tools to use to kind of get ahead of the game a little bit for once, as opposed to waiting for the next big thing to be told to me by some very excited, passionate developer. And instead, what I can see in advance now is where are these you know, top 20 folks from Amadeus, what are they working on? And it turned out, like, six months ago, it was Kafka. They were doing a huge bunch of work in Kafka, and then we got them on stage to talk about it at um, an event, a gathering event. So really, I think 
the stuff that, that we're doing with Viturgia is awesome, and the tools, if you're a community manager, you ought to be using them, because it's almost impossible to do this work anymore by gut, like, or by just personal touch. You really need to get into the data and clean it up and know who your um, relationships are with and what projects your, your project is touching on. You want to add two cents here? Yeah, the only thing I think, this is, from, for our customers, this is a really important question, which is, what's the next hot project? Because I have a community right now of developers. Well, there are, there are two points of view. First, there are some people that don't know where the developers are working in the open source ecosystem. So they don't really know where they are spending the effort or why they are being paid. Um, and the second case is the one you mentioned, which is what's the next hot project? So after Kubernetes, or after what's the next? So if we go for the core developers or the early adopters, we may know in the GitHub ecosystem where they have started to work because they are forking some repository or because they are leaving traces of activity in the issues or pull requests. And that's something doable. It's a matter of time and machine. And who knows, maybe in um, three or four months' time, we'll get access to IBM Watson and be able to drive all this money through, all these data through there, and, and Watson yeah. will tell us. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we went five minutes over, yeah. and I Sorry. ignored anybody flashing cards. But um, yeah. if you have questions or if you want to talk about any of this, um, we're around tomorrow and this afternoon. And um, if there are any questions today about this data set. Is this, sorry. Go ahead. Is this project um, that you two are doing, is it online? Is like, can other people contribute and also look at the data? Or? I would happily um, work with you and uh, <laughs> Uh, so right. just re repeat the question, please. Yes, yeah, so um, the question is, is, is this um, network data? The network data dashboard is not yet online and o uh, open. Um, it's just been something that hmm. Daniel and I are doing, but we're going to be making it accessible. And since you have lots of domain knowledge about OpenStack, um, hmm. I'd love to get your two cents in it. Any other questions? Who wants access to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, yeah. everybody, you for, for staying and sticking out with us. And, um, <laughs>